Hi guys and welcome to 30th episode of Fun Farms. Today I'll show you how to make possibly the simplest and the most robust slime farm you can ever make. And with a few upgrades, that could be also the last slime farm that you would need. This farm is not only extremely simple to build, but also requires, especially at the beginning, extremely simple materials. So this could be literally the first thing you would be able to set up in your world. Also, this farm has a solid state design, so it has no moving parts, no entities, so it will never break. You see, many slime farms are a little too complicated for what a slime farm is supposed to bring, so I thought, how simple could you go without sacrificing the performance? This one, from all the active components, requires only four hoppers. No other entities needed, no minecarts, no boats, no iron golems, so unlike for other types of farms, which I would not recommend building next to your home base, this one will never break, will never cause any extra lag, it's actually fine to build right next to your starter straw home so it could constantly collect slime balls for you. Slime is extremely important because it is required to craft sticky pistons and slime blocks, which are essential for other more complex farms and contraptions. But also, unlike other crafting components, it's extremely hard in practice to find a naturally spawned slime. Due to their spawning requirements, you would need to be extremely lucky to find them underground in the caves, and the only other option you have is to find a swamp and hope that during the night one, maybe two of them would spawn, allowing to collect a few slime balls, maybe by the end of the night, while fighting off all other mobs in the process. Not fun. On the contrary, our simple farm can be put together within a couple minutes with basic tools and materials and would allow us to collect slime passively while we keep working on our base. And this only extra material we need for the starter farm is 8 pieces of magma block. Still I think not a big problem, because if you find just a few pieces of iron you can make a crude nether portal and quickly hop to the nether where magma blocks are abundant. But you can also find them around ocean ruins and in the bottoms of underwater ravines. You need only 8 pieces for the start, so in any ways you should be able to quite easily find what you need. However, with honeybees in the game and honey blocks, you might think that it could be a good replacement for early slime, but that's not really true. Indeed, uh, to make a honey farm it's trivially simple. Observe a dispenser and a few hoppers, really. Also, you can't make sticky pistons with honey, and honey blocks are transparent for redstone, so they respawn differently than slime blocks. Oh, and they don't actually stick to slime, which I think it was a mistake. It seems like everybody wanted it not to stick to slime in the first place, with me included, but I was explained that honey blocks will have some unique properties that would differentiate them not only from slime, but from other blocks, dragging entities with smaller hitbox, transparency, and indeed, after seeing the first proposal for the honey block, it all made sense. Currently, all the unique properties of honey are rather an annoyance because they don't want to behave the same way as the good old slime does and all their unique properties got overshadowed by making them non-sticking to slime. I wish Moyang had a better chance to explain to the wider audience why honey is complete as it was and introduce another type of slime that doesn't stick to the current slime and retains its main properties. And I actually want to show the idea, uh, the, the decent lore, how this could be done. Since swamp slimes and slime chunk slimes have vastly different spawning conditions, it would be really cool if a more dirty variant of a good old slime would spawn in the swamp surfaces instead, and it would drop swamp slime balls instead of regular slime balls. We could still use them to craft sticky pistons, but blocks crafted from them would come out green, not lime. That would allow to have two types of slimy blocks in the game that could glide across each other, with honey blocks sticking to both of them. This would not only mean you would need to come up with the new types of farms to collect swamp slimes as well, but slimestone would have two variants of basic structural blocks, with honey as a transparent variant. But now, with slime and honey not sticking to each other, as everybody wanted, that would probably never happen. Anyways... There is however one trick with slime farms. You need to find a slime chunk. If I could have one complaint to make about the whole slime situation is that there is no viable way in survival to find if a given chunk is a slime chunk. 
other than just digging out the large area underground and waiting till some of them spawn. 10% of chunks are slime chunks, so you might have some success with this method if you're lucky, but if you are willing to do so and know the seed of your game, you can just search for nearby slime chunks in the close vicinity of your base using some third-party tools. I won't blame you if you do it this way. Everybody does that. However, if you are, like me, running carpet mode, placing pink carpets in the caves underground may tell you at some point that a slime may spawn in this place. This way you can tell without leaving your game that this is actually a slime chunk. It's all up to you. So let's say that we figured out in some way or form that this chunk here is a slime chunk. We will need about a stack of logs, some basic tools, some food so we don't starve down there. Take our 8 precious magma blocks, not really precious but uncommon, but hey. And 2 buckets of water to make our infinite water source down in the bottom. We'll be eventually needing this 20 pieces of iron to make it as hoppers, but I'm hoping to find enough of it while digging out our basic farm. Not to interfere with anything we'll be doing here later, we'll be digging 5 blocks away from the corner. That would be in the future our maintenance shaft that we can use to get down and up from the farm. While digging down, it is important not to fall in lava and die, so digging in between blocks is the safest way to go down. So, I have dug down here right up to the first layer of bedrock and then just went back up for two more blocks and scoured the chunk in question on its perimeter just to make sure that we are not dealing with too much lava. A little bit is fine, but a huge lava cave would make this entire process much more time consuming. You could definitely still do that, uh, filling it up with sand is the easiest way to do it in my opinion, but you can use this opportunity to collect some obsidian. But at this stage of the game, finding a different slime chunk would, I think, be the best sort of decision. Now to clear up our trap area standing two blocks above the first bedrock layer, we to clear up three high area here in the slime chunk and going one block lower from that and three block out, on the outside chunks, forming like kind of three wide drop shafts for a big daddy farm in the future, but also our baby farm for now. But before we do that, I made a few furnaces here, and we need to smelt about a stack of cobblestone we just harvested, so we can get cooking while we dig it all out. And we can also start smelting our 20 pieces of iron for the hoppers. We can also use half of our wood just to make sure we spend it on chests. We need 16 of them at the minimum at this point. We also reserve 21 wood to craft ladders to go back up top, so we might as well just do that now. So let's get to digging. So with all the space dug out, it's time to finish the trap. In each corner we made a little opening like so, we place a chest over here and with a hopper pointing into it. Let's leave a torch maybe and two chests like so. Now for the killing method, just place a magma blocks like that and that. This one will be killing small and medium slimes and this one large ones. And just repeat it in four other corners and that's it. The trick is, we will be having water streams here pushing slimes into the corner but also pushing slime balls as well. And since you have these chests over here, items will be able to slide just a little bit further and clip on top of the hopper right here, so that's enough for the hopper to actually suck up the items. At this point we need to add water streams. In each corner we have to go three blocks in and place three pressure plates that we just made from our stone we just smelted. Stone was all around us so that's why I chose stone. In hindsight it doesn't matter at all. I also dug out a little tunnel around the farm so we can easily access all the chests without getting into the farm but we'll also be using this tunnel later to automatically transport slime blows out of the farm. So if we go back here, we can now place our waters. And if you can see, if we place the water source here and here, we should be able to push slimes and slime balls right up to the corner. And also here in the middle, we just need two extra water sources like so and the entirety of the mob collection is actually done. Now we need to place the torches so that other mobs are not able to spawn, as slimes can spawn in any light level. So for that we need to place 8 torches on the platform, but I only got 6 left. Hmm, 
but I heard that if you place them on diorite, it'll light up the entire area. So there's one over here, one here, here, and we have one here and uh, there, and here one in the middle. Let's see. Miracles. Oh, as we can see, it's all light level 8. So the basic trap complete, now we can leave the area and do some tasks around the house, maybe just a little caving, because the rate is going to be slow, you might be able to catch a few slimes per hour, but that's just because we didn't light up the area, but the assumption is that most players would do that at some point caving around their houses, making so that mob farms would actually become very effective during the day, but making the surface also more dangerous at night. And then they would probably light up the terrain as well, making perfect conditions for our little slime farm. And that's the point, to make a simple farm that doesn't require any resources at all, just passively collect more slime. But before we continue, let's look at slimes for a moment. Did you know that slime is the dumbest mob in the game? No kidding. The game has this internal hierarchy of entities that are in the game and the deeper the entity lies in this hierarchy, the more complex it is. So first we start with things like boats, items, they don't do much besides the fact that they exist. Then we have all living entities, which add things like health, armor slots, living entities can be attacked, but again, not too much. Here we have, for example, the armor stand, but also we have other groups that encapsulates all the other mobs in the game. Being a mob gives you ability to having a target, ability to chase and be chosen, being able to see and move, etc. Below that is what in one dev toolkit is called mob with AI, in others proper living entity, which adds a few more other aspects like staying on the leash or have proper pathfinding. And within it you have all the passive entities, monsters, war mobs, etc. For monsters, for example, we get a few more things like attack, damage, not much, but then you get to our proper mobs like zombies, creepers, etc. There's a lot of extra complexity and behaviors they have inherited from all these groups above them. The thing is slimes are not here, they are here. They can have their targets, but they can't pathfind, they can't even technically attack. They are not much smarter than armor stands, for example. They only have two things to do in their life. Flop randomly and slowly in random direction, or flop faster and towards the direction of a player or an iron golem. And that's it. They don't even technically attack the player, they just deal damage when the player gets in contact. And that's why they can damage player that quickly, because there's no delays, no timeouts and stuff like that. And the AI wise, while other mobs have the ability to track the player and figure out the way towards them, slimes don't, as they are just very, very dumb. So what does it mean to our farm? It means that since unlike most mobs that get stationary away from the player, slimes will always hop around, always try to get somewhere. So obviously we could be tempted to use things like iron golems to get them to their demise quicker and more efficiently, but in reality, if we are not hitting the mob cap limits, it's actually not important at all, especially if there are other places around where other mobs can spawn and stay. As long as they eventually make their way to the water streams and get killed, that's just fine. And they will keep jumping regardless how far the player is because they don't have the brains to tell them not to do it. One concern you might have is that mobs despawn when they are far away from their player. The thing is, they won't despawn for the first 30 seconds and it'll take them on average extra 20 seconds for the slime to despawn after that. So if it takes a minute for a slime to get out of our platform, we might get out of luck, but this can happen, but it's extremely rare. Also, if a mob starts taking damage, that resets their despawn timer, so with time, when we get our hands on more magma blocks and start improving the setup without fundamentally changing how it works, as long as the slime lands on the outside, it will be harvested for its balls 100% of the time. So let's make a small test. I'll just pillar up about the farm staying uh, more than 32 blocks away from the ground so no bodies can stay alive forever and we'll check how our basic trap works in this stage. I'm not expecting miracles because this area is completely not prepared for a mob farm but at least we could get some slime passively for a start. So after an hour, almost a stack of slime, not bad for such a simple trap. It's a quite good amount to start to do some sticky pistons and a few slime blocks with it. 
So now we can just walk away. I'll go back to my started straw hut and upgrade it a little. I don't want a bad wolf to blow it off and eat us alive. We can also do some caving like you would normally do around your base, which not only would bring us some nice <laughs> bling blings, but also spawn proof the area. And then we can check on upgrading our small little slime trap and make it an amazing slime farm. Okay, cut here. Hmm. These fools. Do they really think I would just go mining? It's like what mine stands for in Minecraft. Yeah, bollocks. We have the technology, don't we? And it would look exactly if I did it myself. And three, and two, and one. So we have upgraded our straw hut and now it's made out of sticks. And we have also with great effort light up all the caves around the base so hopefully our little slime farm works much better. The fact is, it's not working that great. We have decreased chances for other mobs to spawn around us and only during the day, but there is still a lot that can be done to help slimes to spawn in our farm. If the farm would work on full capacity, that would mean that there should be about 70 slimes at all times, which is the mob cap for one player, but clearly we only have a few of them at most. At this point the farm produces about 10 stacks of slime per hour, which is 10 stacks, but in metric system it's only 700 slime balls per hour. So first things you have to do is to remove all the blocks above the chunk and also above the drops on the sides. This may seem like a lot of blocks, but in practice, as especially if we get access to beacons and good tools, this shouldn't take that long. Alternatively, removing all of this with TNT is also a good idea. Since it's a small area, a few dispensers in a 6 over 6 grid would do the job nicely at a relatively small cost and effort. If you have accidentally blow up the farm, it's not a biggie, it only costed us a few minutes to put it together, so it should not cost much more to restore it. So why we want to do that? Because each block above the farm will significantly reduce mob chances to spawn. I will link you guys to a video where I talk in details how this changed over versions, but what is different in 1.14 is that any block that's not air placed above the farm would reduce its spawn rate. We are also going these three blocks out not only for the looks, but to improve the pack spawning of slimes in our slime farm. These three extra blocks will give us a good couple thousand drops per hour, comparing if you would, for example, just open the farm right above the spawning farm. At this point, we can definitely notice a significant improvement in the spawn rates. Still, that's not 70 slimes, but if we would play, for example, on Skyblock, building that farm at Y0, so unobstructed by any bedrock, would mean that we would be just over flooding with slimes. But we can't go lower here due to the bedrock, so this means that we will need to add more layers on top instead. But before we do that, we need to improve the killing speed, because our starter setup with 8 magma blocks while well, good at for a starter farm ain't gonna cut it in the long run. First we need to replace all places where the water flows with magma blocks. At this point we should have easy access to them so that shouldn't be a problem. As well as replace all blocks underneath the pressure plates with ice. Since now slimes can take damage and die anywhere in the trenches we need to make sure that slime balls have a chance to reach the hoppers from anywhere around the farm and that's why we need ice or better packed ice because ice could melt depending on how we distributed the torches on the spawning pads. At this point we can easily see that we, with much larger influx of slime magma blocks are just not fast enough with dealing with them to the point that slimes are cramming in the corners. The thing is, magma is great at killing small and medium slimes, small slimes just need to touch it to die, but large slimes need to flop for quite some time to die on magma blocks. So we can remedy that with a little bit of lava in the corners, and for that we need to place three signs like here, and then lava blocks, the two blocks above the water. That would kill very quickly large and some medium slimes, and small ones, the only one that drops slimes, will die on magma with their slime balls being harvested by the hoppers. Also, I have lined up the corridor around the farms that we used in the past for easy access to chests with water streams and ice that would allow us to have a simple water collection of drops to be moved to a central spot. 
For that we have replaced these puny little collection chests that we had here with droppers facing upwards with simple clock circuits to dispense the balls to the water streams. I'll just pause here for a second, that's a really classic circuit with a comparator on subtract mode, redstone dot here repeater and two redstone dusts, one feeding back to the comparator and the other powering the block next to the dispenser. This is a real classic. If you are a fan of a new age observer rail combos, be my guest, but these clocks are not causing that much lag, especially comparing to the items that are shot out of those droppers. And that's why I place these cobwebs right above them. The role is to pause most of the dropped out items just a little bit, allowing them to stack up with other items dropped out of the dispensers right after, or possibly other items that are just passing by. This makes so we are not sending a fast chains of individual items, but less item stacks, but in larger stacks. This doesn't seem like much, but that change improved the lag caused by the entire setup here we're gonna have by about 30%, which is significant, because apart from the items here, there is not that much here that would cause any significant strain on the CPU. Obviously, the most lag efficient solution would be to pack up slimes to sugar boxes right here at the hoppers, but that would require a much bigger setup and much more effort than we have here, so that would be an overkill. And on top of that, we also have to have an item filter, because now even with single item farms like this one, you can still get a random piece of leather or a lead on occasion. And that might break some sugar box packers. I also put a stair here to direct the water streams and shield the items while still allowing items to slide underneath this top layer and be collected by the hopper. So, with one spawning layer with blocks at Y6, this farm produces 7800 items per hour assuming the area around is lit up. I'm not saying it's perfect, just lit up the caves and we are during the day. To add more layers, unfortunately we need to raise this one by one block. That would make so slimes that already fallen into the pit won't be able to jump back to the lowest platform. This does lower the drop rate with one layer to 7000 drops per hour, but the rates will improve if we add more layers. By adding layers means adding a platform made of slabs every third block, so slimes have a 2.5 blocks clearance to spawn and move. With second layer added, the rates rise to even 10k drops per hour. With three layers, that's 12,400. With four layers, that's 13,800. And with fifth layer, that's 15,600. And with six layers, 16,500. And with seven, it's 17,400. We could go even higher with these layers, but the returns with each layer were growing even slower and slower, and stopping at seven seems to be like a good spot. But wherever we stop, it is very important to go to the last layer and place string at the block level where the platform is. So in this case, our slabs end on this block, so we need to cover this entire area of tripwire. And that's the most important block in this entire farm. That will raise the spawning Y values on these positions to be even with our top spawning platform, which would cause so that all of these platforms can accept extra spawns attempts from outside the farm. You might be laughing, but without this tripwire, this particular farm will produce only 12,000 drops per hour, not 18,000. And if you want to go even crazier, you can drop this entire hole in the spawning area even more than 3 blocks if you want. From my experience, up to 5 makes sense, beyond that is just a cost for nothing. But with this tripwire, it's essential. So why so? Not only we're gonna get more spawns on the pads, but also more spawns will end up at the edge of the spawning pad, which makes it more likely that the slime will drop on its own quicker. It's a very, very important step. I also made these tests on hard difficulty with maximum local difficulty, which we can obtain by playing longer than one chunk. But if we happen to have this farm next to our home base, that shouldn't be a problem. Higher difficulty increases chances for large slimes to spawn, which increases slightly the rates of the farm. If you look at the mobcap counter meter that we have installed here, we are still not even at the mobcap with this setup, meaning that we have still some room to go. Now, I have something really important to tell you, so like Karal is saying, look at my eyes, and nothing but my eyes. The design of the farm, so what we do to lure and kill them, as long as we have the same spawning conditions, so number of spawning spaces and spawning chances, which we have increased here significantly by adding the string, as long as we stay below the mob cap, which we do, and torching up the area as a big part of it, the design of the farm doesn't matter. 
Where it does matter is when we want to scale it up to 50,000, 100,000 drops per hour. That's when we need to think how to get them quicker. This design is not fast, but it doesn't matter. We can still scale it up quite a bit. How much? We need to test it out. And only if that's still below expectations is where we can start adding mechanisms to kill them quicker, like luring them with golems or by using portals. Below that, it doesn't matter that much. Oops, I think I overdid this one. Nah, it's coming back. So at some point when you advance in the game enough, you may decide that one slime farm is not enough and we need a second one. Thankfully that's exactly what the game allows us for this design and with one farm running here we can easily replicate the same setup in other chunks nearby that also happen to be a slime chunk. And due to the benefits of side spawning, it's actually a bad idea to utilize chunks that touch each other. That would only make the platforms larger and harder for the slimes to find their way out, as well as lower the benefits of getting them spawned next to the edge with our 1.14 tripwire trick. And that's good, because this means that we can build this kind of a duo setup absolutely everywhere. And the total for this double configuration would be at 30,000 drops per hour, still using only 4 puny hoppers per farm. To collect all the drops. So that would be it guys for today, a very simple starter slime farm that could very well become the last one you'd ever need. Unless 30,000 slimes per hour which is 9 double chests is still not good enough for you. No moving parts, no entities, in impossible to break, yet still require a little bit of work that is no different from any other mob farm. So you either need to light up all the caves in the area to make it fully functional during the days, or light up the surface as well to have it working 100% also during the night. We can obviously remove the entire terrain instead, making an empty space, that would work too, but that's too much effort in my opinion. If you want to minimize the area to prepare, you would have to build these farms quite close to each other so that the distance from the furthermost hopper collections to the player AFK block is at most 128 blocks away, and in this case we can limit the required caves and terrain that needs to be lit to the absolute minimum within the sphere. But this would mean that the farm would only be effective if a player is in that very spot. But in case you opt in for a single AFK spot, don't forget to supply it with a proper ceiling, otherwise phantoms may bother you a little. This farm works best in single player, and if you play on a busy server with other people that stay in the areas that are not prepared for mob spawning, sorry, your raid's gonna suck anyways. But on the other hand, you don't need to stress out about preparing the area or building more complex designs. This very simple one's gonna work just as well as the others. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave me a like, leave me a comment in the comment section below, and if you are new, subscribe for more such simple but powerful farms in the future. So, see you in the next one. Bye bye.